Welcome everyone for the um, Bharat Ka Night um, panel discussion for this month of October is uh, every function has a role to play in CX. So um, we have touched upon many, many different topics about uh, like, you know, customer experience and uh, how to like, you know, go about it, how to make it a better one. So this time, like, you know, uh, we are like you know, approaching in a little bit different way that is like, you know, um, what like you know what every person and every function within a company and like you know what is a role uh like you know that they play to make it happen the, the best customer experience or a memorable one or or give something that like you know makes that customer uh, feel good about like you know thinking about the brand or like thinking about coming back again whatever it is right so so what could be that so we have a great panelist with us like you know to discuss their experience and like you know uh, help us to navigate this uh challenging uh topic so uh, i want to like you know um add one um like you know the example that i came to know about um so in the nasa so uh, when uh, they were like you know working um so seriously about um like you know making everything happen and how to send the um, like you know rockets and like you know how to land in different like, you know, parts of the universe and like, you know, uh, do all this research. So um, the building maintenance person, like, you know, um, the, the department for the building maintenance or uh, like, you know, um, giving a good environment for the scientists and the researchers to work, right? A good place. Uh, so what is the role that they have to play, right? You would be thinking like, you know, uh, they will be doing the regular, uh, like, you know, work just like anywhere else, like, you know, just keeping the building clean and everything. But then when they were asking about one of the person, uh, like, you know, uh, who happens to be the janitor and then like, you know, so uh, what are you doing? So his uh, response to that question was like, you know, uh, Putting, uh, sending rockets to uh, moon and uh, like, you know, other um, parts of the universe is what I do. Um, if you think about it, actually, um, is he doing that or he is doing the building maintenance? Right? Um, yes, he is doing the building maintenance, but then he's creating, he's being the part of that environment where he's creating that good place or like, you know, good environment for the engineers to come and do the work on a daily basis to send the rocket to moon, right? But then his role is very important, right? The way how they thought about it, how the way how they are going about, like, you know, delivering a stuff or like, you know, going at it, their role is very important, right? Because we cannot keep everybody motivated every day uh, just based on the compensation or just based on some title or just based on something else, right? It has to be something coming from within. So what is that within, right? And um, and if, if that can be like this, like, you know, aligning their goal, they are be getting them excited about, like, you know, doing what the organization is doing, right? Then probably like you know, everybody would be delighted in doing what they are doing and then they will uh, like you know provide the best of themselves and then like you know good um like a role model and then the good environment for the customers like you know to come and uh, like you know to experience the product and like you know to be a good success story right so with that thought in the mind right so how do we go about this topic every function has a role to play in cx right so um, there are some um Statistics that we want to touch up on here right now. So the customer experiences are scaling new heights. According to a recent survey conducted by like PwC, 86% um, of customers are willing to pay more for better customer experiences. So that's 86%. So the study is also showing that 89% of the consumers have switched to a competitor following a poor customer experience, meaning um, like you know, all it takes is like, you know, one hour, to, um, like, you know, most likely one, like, you know, if you're lucky, like, you know, two experience for, to lose a customer, which is, uh, like, you know, a reality because there are so many options and there are so many, uh, like, you know, uh, ways to go about getting a things done, right? So, um, so we, we like, you know, in, in that way, 
customer has a lot of choices and that means like you know we have to be still a lot more vigilant and a lot more uh, careful how we are approaching how we are taking care of them and uh, like you know uh, making it happen and then and then doing it again and again every day it's not just one time uh, because like you know uh, no one product like you know is going to be there uh, throughout the life for the like you know, any of the customers right so so how do we keep them like you know loyal to us so, so let's let's go about and then discuss this with our three of our great panelists today right so let me introduce the panelists here so let's first go to uh, madhulika <clears throat> sangvi so she is a CXO incubator member, catalyst, mentor, and a writer, panelist, and like, you know, podcast guest. So she's done a lot of things, right? Malika shares her insights and perspective on various topics related to leadership and <clears throat> the transformation. She's empathetic, like, you know, leader uh, <clears throat> and growth mindset advocate and like, you know, transformation um leader awardee so she has been uh, like you know awarded that for that particular uh, reason as well so she serves as a vice president of kfin technology uh, leading domestic and international business development uh, like you know for fund services she she has over 17 years of experience um delivering like you know value to clients and stakeholders in the financial service sector so, so we are delighted to have you as part of this uh, panel, uh, Madhulika, and like, you know, so we, we are more than excited to like, you know, hear from your uh, experience and uh, share your thoughts today. Thanks so much. Thank for you being. so much for the uh, warm introduction, Uttaman. Yeah, really sure. appreciate it. Mm -hmm. So ne our next uh, panelist is Mohit. Uh, Mohit is a vice president at Pristine Care. Mohit heads the patient experience and training function. He works towards uplifting uh, patient experience across all touch points. He has devised and implemented many uh, initiatives through which he influences key functional uh, leaders to keep patients at the center of everything they do. He is instrumental in implementing various programs to improve <clears throat> product offerings and uh, processes. We are so happy that you could join us and I'm sure uh, like in our audience would be thrilled to hear your perspective on the CX uh, or like, you know, should I say the patient experience uh, for Mohit? <laughs> yeah. Thanks well, so thanks much. Thanks for Mohit. having me here. I'm glad. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And our, um, the last uh, but not the least uh, panelist is like, you know, Rohit. So Rohit is a young entrepreneur um, he has a lot of experience from the past and then like, you know, so he has um, decided to jump onto this entrepreneurship. Um, so he is with a lot of interest in energy sector and he is currently functions as the director of uh, energy, energy, energetics engineering solutions. He firmly believes in improving the customer experience with every interaction with his customers. Um, with his customers, Customer focused approach. He has grown his organization multifold since its inception in 2021, right after the COVID, or through the COVID, middle of the COVID. Um, coming from a mechanical engineering background, uh, Rohit would bring a different perspective to the topic. Uh, Rohit, thank you for being part of this panel uh, discussion. Thank you. Thank you. I'm uh, glad to be a part of this panel. Thank you for having me. Absolutely, yeah. So we'll we'll like you know without further delay, we'll go to the discussion point. So first discussion point, like you know, all uh, three of you can chip in with your uh, like you know idea. It's going to be like you know the starter, and like you know we'll we'll touch up on the core topic here. Um, let us take a moment to define what customer centricity is. Um, also, can you share specific strategies or initiatives your organization has implemented to instill a uh, customer-centric culture across all functions. So whoever wants to go first? Um... Well, uh, let me let me uh, take a shot at it. Uh, so, so at Pristine Care and in my experience, what I've seen, uh, you know, we have to make many decisions on a daily basis, right? These are business decisions uh, with the, you know, around cost, around, uh, what kind of services that we want to tailor for our customers or our patients. I think when it comes to customer centricity, one of the important aspects that I believe that defines the culture is that the yeah. decisions when they are being made, uh, are they keeping customer uh, at the center of it or not? 
are we uh, looking at numbers uh, you know when it comes to cost or are there other factors that involves in it or the patient is the top uh, you know sort of factor for any business to take a call or uh, any business decision to take on so i believe customer centricity is defined by that uh, i have couple of uh, you know examples uh, wherein you know in our unique model where we are in a health tech organization and we are working with a lot of our partner hospitals and and and, and you know we sort of virtually connect with all our patients while uh, they are hospitalized right so it was very important that you know uh, you know to build a model which is cost effective but also uh, ensures that there is an empathy and there is a human touch uh, yeah. you know uh, with the patients and and uh, one thing we realize that you know our patients when they uh, come to us they are not at their uh, you know best of health right this is not their high point of their life uh, you know when they are uh, utilizing our services so they might be uh, you know in a moment uh, going through a surgery for the first time in their lives or maybe second time right so that becomes really important that when we tailor a process uh, we do not look at cost as a factor but we should look at scalability and the human touch and how do we service them in real time right uh, so we uh, sort of built a, a team called patient outreach uh, wherein we provided a dedicated uh, patient experience coordinator to every patient uh, that comes to a hospital now you know in today's modern world where we have built a lot of bots a lot of chats a lot of other options where patients can digitally you know look at a lot of data and uh, their progress uh, but building that human process was really critical because we wanted to make sure that the patient should not feel uh, that they are all alone in the hospital there is somebody who's taking care of it although you know patient uh, is in the hospital so their staff is taking care of them but we just wanted to make sure there is an extra ear to uh, what's going on and if they are facing any issues and we can uh, fix them like in a jiffy so we took that call Uh, our uh, net promoter score at that point was around 42 44 and immediately after we built this process we realized there was a 10 percentage point jump like within a month and oh. and that was that was a huge huge factor where we felt our patients wanted to be uh, you know wanted to keep in touch with us they wanted to sort of raise issues and get their issues resolved and that yeah. sort of brought a lot of satisfaction uh, in their journey so that is one uh, one of the many decisions that we have taken uh, keeping patients at the center of our business decisioning so uh, so yeah that is one uh, great example and also to build that culture right it is not about having one team uh, which is taking care of the patient it's every function that adds value and what we did and uh, you know it's very heartwarming for me uh, when there was a small kid who was going through a procedure and we got a very smiling uh, selfie uh from from uh, his parents and i realized you know everyone in the organization should see that face that smiling face when they were going through their journey in the hospital and we created a happy patient board in pristine care and uh, and we kept it at the elevator area we got hundred of selfie from our patients when they were at the hospital and that uh, sort of created a good sort of vibe in the office where like everyone who's working hard we are all working towards that goal that happy patient and uh, yeah. that really sort of changed perspective for a lot of leaders and a lot of uh, colleagues here at prestige care yeah. so so that was that was a couple of things that you know really sort of helped us uh, push uh, in the direction of uh, customer or patient centricity really yeah actually that is very exciting and a uh, yeah, very unique way of doing it right because um, ultimately we want to make them happy and then like you know why not capture it and then like you know display it and then inspire others and uh, yes. so like you know because you are not just a, inspiring uh, like you know employees even the uh, like you know your customers and your like you know patients like you know uh, physician everybody is like you know excited and then like you know taking effort to go towards that goal yeah, yeah. and 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 you know the, one of the things that i was really uh, and that was like a month back i saw that one of the sales person actually took a selfie in front of that happy patient board and posted on their social media and i was like you know this is you uh, really good that you know every different uh, you know function is sort of taking pride in that wall so so yeah. again there is one of the uh, you know smaller initiative we took to sort of really build that you know uh, patient happiness and patient centricity is really critical for our success
yeah yeah this, this is this is exactly what i was trying to like you know, explain right even in the last example because it cannot be a compensation it cannot be a promotion or a title right that can be a temporary right it cannot be the one that's sustaining us and do the same thing again and again every single day every day yeah yeah so that's that's a very good point uh right okay so who's going next yeah i'll uh, i'll be taking my point yeah, yeah. Uh, i couldn't agree more uh, from what uh, mohit just explained uh, customer has to be at the center of all our uh, transactions because right from uh, in our industry right from the information gathering during the prospecting stage till we finally deliver the product to their uh, uh, to their site uh yeah. we uh, keep them in uh, center of the discussion and we make sure uh, we are transparent enough to explain them the uh, happenings around uh, what is the transaction which is happening and what are yeah. the parameters which we have considered and are we both on the same page while uh, discussing the things and all and we make sure that uh, even our team members uh, mm-hmm. be it from the back office who handle the invoicing part or the logistics part they are also talking the same language and they are also staying in the same page as the customer uh, is expected uh, expecting us to do uh, the things uh, uh, the way they want it to happen so uh, one thing is uh, transparency which we maintain uh, from the beginning stage to the, the very end stage of uh, payment production and the second thing is uh, empowering our uh, employees uh, to take uh, right decision in, in the absence of uh, any senior member of the team so it is not like uh, today some of the senior member is not there a senior team member is not available and the junior guy who is at the site will not be able to take a call so we empower them uh, technically as well as uh, in all such parameters so that he can take a right decision at the uh, in front, standing in front of the customer so that the customer never feels that uh, he has to wait for the right person to walk into his door so throughout yeah. the journey uh, our team members are empowered and we maintain that transparency so that uh, uh, customer is not kept in uh, uh, something hidden uh, he doesn't feel something is hidden from him and uh, this has made uh, i can pr- probably say in last couple of years or uh, repeat orders are more from the existing customer so there are a set of happy customers who are uh, uh, who are willing to do much more business transactions and we we firmly believe that uh, it is not just uh, ticking the check box uh, uh, we uh, we make sure that uh, beyond ticking the check box we walk an extra mile to make that customer uh, satisfied or happy yeah absolutely actually what you are mentioning is like you know uh, we we call it as like you know um g- making sure like you know you you empower your employees like you know to do the right right moment right because without that um our customers are like you know going to feel um um like you know why why they are delaying it like you know because um we are coming into an environment where we are getting used to an instant world right like you know like we are, we are sliding we are sliding our uh, touch screen and then like you know swiping and then like you know we are we are extend yeah. we are expecting uh like you know instant gratification and so also if you think about it uh, like you know uh, it is not what we sell right it is how we sell right how uh how we uh, make them feel important how we like you know uh make them like you know give them the credibility hey you asked for it and you got it so kind of a thing like you know that that makes a lot of sense yeah the very very good point exactly the whole point of we starting or we getting into this uh, entrepreneurial role is to associate with uh, good customers and create a loyal customer base without yeah. which uh, I, i firmly believe a loyal customer or a happy customer is the only asset a company can have in the long run absolutely yeah yeah the all, all other financial numbers right it, it is there um and it, it is very important but then that number uh, like you know is a direct reflection of your happy customers right so um like you know so so we cannot work for the numbers we have to work for the happy customers that, that the number will happen Yes. Yeah. Yeah, good point yeah so yeah let's let's hear from malika now yeah so i must say that uh, you know today i'm not just a panelist here i think i'm a student as well so i'm learning a lot from our conversations today uttam and mohit and rohit and some of the points uh, which uh, mohit and rohit both uh, brought to the table 
uh, Mohit, I think you mentioned empathy and that truly aligned with uh, the way I think about, you know, how we need to deal with any external or internal stakeholder, right? Mm -hmm. And Rohit, you brought in the word transparency. And I think we live in a wonderful time where a leadership has become very purposeful, right? So why are we, why are we, why are we all into a certain line or a certain business, right? Obviously, we have to, uh, you know, look after ourselves, our family. So that one part of it, but it's a very small part of it. The reason we all are into a business or, uh, you know, in a leadership role today is because we want to solve for a problem. And that too with a purpose. So for any business, the most important stakeholder is the customer. Because without the customer, you have no business, right? So you have two things. You have a product, so you have a customer and you have the product. And you, your job is to, our, our job is to align everything together to ensure that the business grows and we are solving for a problem. We are bridging a certain gap, which is there in the industry or for the customer, right? So to me, if I was to define customer centricity or customer experience, and I'm from the B2B world, Okay, so things work a little bit differently uh, in the B2B world compared to a, a B2C or a retail uh, business or a product. So to me, customer centricity is not about being available at the beck and call of, of a client or a customer. To me, it is about providing consistent value addition to the customer as an end user. Okay, so when you, so, so any organization to me has to be able to evaluate our own internal processes, engage the various uh, you know, departments and teams in such a way that you create a vision where the customer is at the center or at the heart of the entire process. Okay, But in the entire process, I would say, yes, the customer is king and we have to focus a lot on the customer. But in our previous conversations as well, CX is crucial. And so is EX, right? So the employee passion, the passion of the employees, the engagement of the employees, starting from the CEO or the MD down to the last person in the organization, that passion has to, uh, you know, be very forthcoming. The energy in the organization, I believe, has to be very high so that you are able to give that kind of an experience to your end user, your customer as a stakeholder. Yeah, okay? yeah. So one of the ways I'm thinking, and in one of my previous org organizations, how do you bring various uh, departments together, right? One of the ways I thought can really work very well in any organization is when each department treats each other as a customer, okay? So let's say for an HR team, the sales team, the business development team, the technology team, the digital team, the marketing team are all customers, for me, as a business, so I'm the first point of contact for the customer, right? As a business development, uh, you know, uh, person, yeah. right? The, ro the role that I play. So for me, the other teams, the product team, the tech team, with whom I am going to liaise to ensure that my customer gets the product that he anticipates or the service that he ante anticipates. So my internal teams, why can't I treat them like my own customer rather than somebody who will just do the job for me? so that I can shine in front of my customer, right? So liaising between various teams respectfully with customer centricity at the center of the vision of the organization. And this vision needs to be communicated very, very clearly and with simplicity to every single person within the organization that we are here. We need to ensure that we are providing the best possible service or experience for our product and services to our customer, right? So it has to be a culture and every single team in the organization has to be weaved into this culture. Uttaman, you were mentioning about the janitor, right? Now, if you look at most of the people who, and, and that was really a lovely uh, point you brought in. Uh, when I look at the people who are the helpers within my office or the organization, they're always smiling and ensuring they're there for us, no matter how small that job is. Yeah. So we might feel it's a very small thing we are asking from them, get us some tea or can you get us, but the role that they're playing in a smiling way adds huge value to our well-being. And when we have our well-being, we are also treating the customer accordingly or we, it, it, it kind of reflects on our relationship with our external stakeholders as well. 
So yeah. everything is intertwined in an organization. And there is no doubt that each and every department, each and every individual within the organization has to intertwine to ensure that the best possible experience or exposure is, uh, you know, uh, is, is expressed to our customer who is going to buy our product and our organization is going to thrive based on the revenue which we receive from him as well, him or her. Certainly, yeah. So these are my thoughts. Uh, to, to sum it up, can each department within the organization consider each other as a customer as well to bring yeah. in the best experience? Absolutely, yeah. So um, even like, you know, when I was talking about the, the janitor example, so uh, for him, uh, like, you know, the customers are the engineers, the customers are the researchers or the PhD and the, like, you know, the, the scientists and uh, like, you know, so everybody's in that building are their customers, right? Because uh, they, they are, they are serving them. So, yeah. And if he is uh, like, you know, you <laughs> pride about that and if he's doing a good job, absolutely. Like, you know, others are going to like, you know, see that positive vibe and like, you know, uh, and reflect on that and like, that's going to be good for overall. Right, because it has to be, uh, it has to be like you know from from everybody. Uh, so that's 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 a key. So yeah, that's a very good point, uh, Malika. Thanks so much. So let's move on to the next discussion point, uh, Mohit. Uh, it's, it's like you know you can start with this, and then if uh, if both of you others like you know want to add, they can add. Otherwise, like you know uh, we'll move on to the next one. The discussion point is um, how does your organization gather customer feedback, input, and insights? How do you integrate them into product development or service design processes? Can you take us through the some examples? Oh, absolutely. And again, uh, you know, technology is a great enabler for customer experience in this era. Uh, I think, uh, you know, when I when I look at pristine care and our processes and our journey, uh, you know, patient feedback was the most critical uh, metric that we used to. Uh, or we still, uh, you know, used to gather every day. So, uh, you know, a couple of years back, uh, we had a dedicated team who would call our patients after the discharge and ask them about uh, their experience at the six or seven, uh, you know, critical touch points that we had defined for them. So, for example, if anyone goes to a hospital, uh, you know, their experience during admission, uh, you know, during discharge processes, uh, how was the infra at the hospital, you know, the staff behavior, uh, how was their experience with the surgeons, uh, you know, so the, we had sort of defined an extensive uh, sort of model where we, we would sort of ask them to rate it and uh, provide any feedback if there was any gap, right? Uh, and we used to get 80% feedback on a monthly basis. So we would call all our patients, get 80% feedback and to understand how the uh, uh, you know, experience going on. We collected a lot of issues, we uh, a lot of insights as to how different hospitals, uh, how different cities are working out uh, with the model that we were at. And then uh, there has been a journey from that uh, from that uh, first step uh, to today, where we are taking entire feedback through digital channels. Uh, today we collect forty four to forty five percent of feedback only through digital bots. So we have a WhatsApp bot which uh, gets triggered after discharge. There is an IVR call. There is also a link that goes to the patient. Uh, so there are three uh, robust channels we have designed for them. Uh, so that we can get, uh, you know, their input on how their experience was. And, and again, we have seen a lot of uh, sort of growth in, in that experience. Uh, I, I remember at some point our digital uh, NPS was around 2030. And today it is a healthy 64. And that is a journey of two years. So, and it is all digital. So today, you know, at that point, our thought process was that, you know, we need to know what's going wrong. I know, uh, you know, it is not the standard practice to call the patient and ask for feedback, uh, but we did it because we really wanted to understand what's not going right and what is going right. Uh, and that really helped us build a program around how do we look at issues? How do we look at friction points? How do we look at what's going right in the model? And so that we can scale that uh, and fix some of those processes. So, on a monthly basis, we get uh, this feedback from our patients. Uh, there is a daily or weekly conversations that are happening with our operations team, our sales team, uh, our uh, you know logistic teams, uh, just to ensure that you know we are creating better transparency. Uh, we are creating end-to-end -end journeys uh, for our patients. So uh, you know we had created a, a tracker 
uh, for our patients in the patient app itself. So if there is a patient of patient receipt care, he downloads the app, he can see his entire journey in the app itself. Uh, so, for example, what is the current status? What is the next step? What is the that of that next step? Their documents, like the end-to-end -end journey is defined in that app uh, so that, you know, they don't have to go anywhere else. Uh, also, as I said, there is an outreach team that sort of perish them in real time. Uh, so, so, you know, technology has really helped us. Uh, even when I talk about follow-up processes or uh, recovery process where after 60 days, uh, we uh, try to connect with patients for their recovery. Uh, a lot of that uh, is done through technological solutions as well. Like okay. there is not the first human call that goes to the patient. First, there is a bot that gets triggered. They can book their own appointments and their free will whenever they uh, they feel they want. They can go to the patient. But if they, we feel that okay, uh, you know they are not using it, so second day, third day onwards, the call starts so that you know there is a human who sort of also being in touch and making sure they're recovering. So, so technology uh, has played a very key part in our journey uh, because, again, the scale that we are at, we are operating across 40 plus cities uh, and, and we really need to make sure that every patient gets the same experience. Uh, I mean, technology is helping us on a daily basis. So that has been our journey. We look at that feedback data religiously. We look at how many issues are there and how do we solve each and every point uh, and, and that's how I think uh, our net promoter score has also increased by many percentage points. So, so yeah, uh, very important for our business. Yeah, yeah, very well said, actually. Yeah, NPS from 20 to 60 plus, yeah, it's, 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 it's not an easy task. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, great, great. Okay. So, uh, uh, Kuthaman, I'd like to add one point to this. Sure. Yeah. And from my experience, right, I mean, when we are taking, so feedback, uh, Mohit mentioned feedback and there are different ways of collecting feedback, right? Now in B2B business, uh, you know, when you're, uh, when you're managing a B2B business, right? The number of contact points that you have to deal with are much lesser than a retail business, right? So often, so while collection of feedback in a formal way for us does make a lot of sense and you document all of this, right? the feedback that you get, good, bad. And if you do get constructive feedback or negative feedback, how do you convert it? So you, you need to act upon each and every feedback that comes and you need to decide that how does this work for me? How can I improve upon this, right? Having said that, when we speak to the customer, we need to also, you know, kind of ask the right questions. Every so, you know, questionnaires can often be very standardized. But are we asking the right questions to the customer? Are these questions transactional or are they long-term, uh, you know, questions which can impact you or help you evaluate for the long-term, right? Uh, so asking the right questions, according to me, when we are taking feedback becomes very crucial. So this is something that each of us should think about. Yeah. And also the timeliness of it. Uh, like if you, if you ask too early, you're missing half the journey. If you ask too late, uh, you know, the customer might not recall the entire experience. So a uh, timeliness of that uh, survey is also very critical. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, good point. Yeah. So uh, next discussion point uh, goes to Madhu. So um, it is, uh, <clears throat> the research point is like technology, I'm sure, plays a vital role in uh, customer experience. Uh, have you encountered any specific technology-related obstacles while connecting customer-facing and internal systems? And what have you done to overcome them? That's a very pertinent question, Uttaman. And yes, so I work in an organization that weaves people in technology to provide services and products to uh, the end user. Right to asset managers and to corporates, and yes, uh, I mean contrary to what uh, people believe, everybody wishes that technology would give seamless solutions, right? And to a large extent, technology has enabled, uh, you know, uh, ease of operations, uh, solving for a lot of problems uh, that we face on a day-to-day -day basis. But as we grow, so what the biggest challenge I find is that when a business is growing very, very fast. Right. And that's the challenge when your technology also needs to catch up very quickly. Okay. So how agile are you with that? And how agile are your teams to 
cater to that speed of growth. Okay, so I suggest, I, I, I really think, and we face this, right? When business uh, really grows very fast, you are at a stage where you are unable to solve for a lot of things right away, right? So you have to have a little bit of vision in any business. And if you're expecting a very, very fast growth of sales or, you know, uh, deliveries, I think one has to really evaluate hiring in advance and investing into technology in advance. So some foresight is required there, I think. So this is a gap I think a lot of businesses could face uh, when they are approaching a very, very fast growth, uh, you know, phase, I would say. So from my experience, this has been one thing. So preparedness to cater to such a gap, I think is some something which every uh, organization should be thinking about in advance and not when you are actually facing that uh, challenge. Okay. Um, also, also, yes, technology is an enabler. And uh, Mohit, you spoke about bots. And I think bots can do a lot of, uh, you know, they, they can create magic in terms of data collection and taking care of basic requirements. But in terms of complex solutions, uh, Uttaman, yeah. I think human intervention uh, cannot be replaced. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there are certain complex resolutions, uh, certain uh, I would say customizations, which clients ask for, they want to be ahead of the curve. They want their product or service to be, uh, you know, beyond what anybody else is offering. So at that stage, the resolution has to come from the people. And then obviously technology has to be created around it to solve for it. Okay. So sometimes we see gaps and sometimes uh, we very, very clearly know that there has to be a hand-in-hand -hand, uh, collaboration between people and technology, uh, especially in terms of complex, uh, you know, solutioning or complex problems. Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. very, very good points. Yeah, yeah. So uh, complex queries are like, you know, always uh, better to be uh, associated with a human. The technology can play a role where it can assist with some information. Uh, it can like, you know, show the trend. It can pick up some of the peculiar uh, conditions and uh, highlight it. But mm -hmm. then like it has to be human, like, you know, who interprets it all and then put it together and then like, you know, interacts with the other side and then like, you know, make them understand what it is. So yeah, that's very, very cool. Sure. Yeah. For example, I'll just take a minute more. For example, bots can solve for certain problems, yeah. but if I am a frustrated customer, I am not, let's say I bought something and I'm not able to return it and nobody is able to understand my problem, then a bot cannot help. Then I really want to dial that number nine. Uh, and I want to speak to somebody who can solve the problem for me. And I feel the comfort there that, yes, I'm being taken care of. Yeah. So it's, it's, I think it depends on situations and, uh, uh, you know, merging the two together can really work wonders. Uh, and being ahead of the curve in terms of anticipating what gaps can be created because of high growth businesses is something everybody should be looking at or thinking about. Yeah. Good. Good point. Yeah. So thanks. Um, so next, move on to the next fourth discuss, discussion point uh, for Rohit. Um, employee experience is closely tied to the customer experiences you provide. After all, happy employees make happier customers. Um, can you share instances where improving employee experience has resulted in tangible improvements in customer experience? Yes, Uttam, it's a uh... Right question. Uh, in today's uh, scenario, where uh, employee plays a very vital role in uh, uh, maintaining customer uh, relationships, so it is uh, uh, very important for an organization to take care of its employee also. So I would put it simple: uh, we should also treat our employees as our customers. First thing. So once our employees become customers, so we all plan our activities in. Uh, creating a very good atmosphere uh, for that employee also, uh, be it uh, taking care of their uh, insurance part or, uh, or the monetary or the financial parts or providing them with uh, adequate trainings on a uh, timely basis or rewarding them or appreciating them for the good works, what they do on a day-to-day -day basis and engaging with them uh, to the grassroots level, like uh, whatever their uh, uh, problems are or to understand what they are going through in their day-to-day -day activity. If they are stuck somewhere, uh, talk to them and uh, resolve the uh, hurdle what they are facing. 
and uh, 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 first thing, uh, uh, as I said, we should uh, start treating them as our customers, so that uh, if my, if I make their uh, life better, uh, they will definitely contribute in making the customers' life better in the uh, in the site or in the field whenever they are uh, going. And uh, to empower them, as I uh, mentioned earlier, empowering the uh, empowering an employee to take right decisions uh, when they face the customer is also a vital uh, thing to uh, equip them with. Because uh, employees like uh, ammunition, without a bullet, the ammunition is uh, nothing. So uh, bullet is something like uh, it's a decision making ability of an employee. So whenever they are, whichever the function they represent, they may be from accounts department or from the finance department or from the crediting team or from the logistics team. So if we empower them to take right decisions on uh, situation-based uh, right decision, so they will uh, they will definitely put their uh, thoughts into that and they'll take right decision. And this will also in turn uh, uh, make them feel that they are important to the organization. Because yes. uh, most, of, most of the time when the employee feels they're not empowered or they're not uh, equipped with right skills, uh, if we don't train them properly, uh, this is one of the reason why uh, the attrition rate increases. So when yeah. we may when we provide them with uh, proper training and when we empower them with uh, decision making uh, abilities, so this will also uh, connect them well with the organization. And uh, when they face a customer internally or the external stakeholder, they will be in a position to uh, communicate better uh, and put their thoughts better uh, in front of the customer. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's a very good point. Yeah. So, um, like you know, keeping employees happy is not just uh, like you know the compensation alone, right? There's a lot of yes. things, like, lot of things yes. empowering them, and like you know making, uh, giving them importance, and make them feel like you know you are empowered. Like you know, it takes uh, like you know takes them a long way, and that's very very key part of it, uh, especially now. So yeah, that works. Uh, that works not only to keep them happy, and also it works as like, you know, make our customers happy too. So it's very, very good point. Yeah. yeah. yeah because uh, so, by just giving them some designation, fancy designations or something and not equipping, uh, equipping with them the with the power to handle that designation, it, it is uh, nothing for them. It yeah. means nothing for them. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. So that's a good point. So with that, we'll come, we are coming to the last discussion point here. Uh, so this is for like, you know, um, all three of you can like, you know, chip in, uh, let's like, you know, try to get it in, in like the next five, six minutes. So we have some time for the, uh, like, you know, answers from the, uh, questions from the audience. So, um, the, the discussion point is data is critical for understanding customer behavior. How do you collect customer data and how do you analyze them? Can you also share how you derive insights from them with some examples that helped you enhance the customer journey? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, for proceed care, as, as I mentioned, in, uh, you know, in the last interaction, uh, we uh, sort of massage a lot of data on a monthly basis. Uh, I mean, we are blessed that 44% to 50% of our patients give us monthly feedback, right? That okay. generates a lot of data and enough data across 40 plus cities, uh, across 300 plus hospitals, uh, where we get insights on uh, what are the challenges that they're facing. Um, and, and that gives us a lot of uh, you know food for thought as to where we want to invest in, how do we solve some of the friction points. And we realized one of the areas uh, was around creating more transparency. So for example, uh, you know, if a patient is going for a surgery, uh, and, and, you know, uh, during the operating procedure, a surgeon might find another thing or two, uh, you know, on the operating table and they have to uh, sort of correct that. Uh, and and uh, a lot of times what was happening that patients were sort of saying, oh, uh, I was I was sort of not sure about the bill amount upfront, right? And, and that was something that we seriously took uh, that, you know, we need to sort of solve for this. And we, uh, you know, in the first two years, there was so much data we had because, again, uh, doing 5,000 surgeries over the last four years give us a lot of insights into how different uh, hospitals and how different tariffs are for different sort of category of uh, diseases that we are working on. And we sort of created a panel uh, on, on that data and, and we sort of ensured that any patient who's walking through our doors 
get the tentative amount upfront. So uh, there is a message that we say, commitment message from Christine. We send out to our patients. We tell them, okay, this is going to be a tentative cost. This is the surgery. This is the surgeon. This is the hospital. Uh, this would be your tentative discharge time. And again, uh, if you go to a hospital today, you hardly get to see all the details upfront, right? And, and that's sort of added a lot of value for our patients and sort of resolve a lot of friction points uh, wherein they could understand, okay, what they are going for yeah. and, and how, much, how long they would stay in a hospital. Also, uh, in, in certain cases wherein we understand that, uh, you know, in certain hospital, like the infrastructure could be an issue or, you know, in healthcare, one of the issues that everyone is facing is there's a lot of churn in the staff. Uh, in the hospital staff, you know, uh, so it was really important uh, that we continue to train, uh, you know, the hospital staff on on the patient handling bit. Although hospital have their own programs, uh, I'm talking about tier one, tier two, tier three hospitals as well, uh, where they may not have that robust programs. Where we sort of took on uh, as a responsibility that you know every patient who's going through the experience with us get that experience that we wanted. Um, and, and that really helped us because of the data, because it, tell, it told us that, you know, certain staff in that certain hospital need to be trained on something or they were uh, not courteous or, you know, they didn't have empathy or care. So we sort of build a lot of programs, training programs. We do this every month across the hospitals. Uh, and that has really helped solve a lot of problems for our patients as well. So whether it is staff, whether it is hospital intra, whether it is building more transparency, even even sort of uh, reducing delays during admission and discharge, right? Uh, like we look at all these uh, aspects on a daily basis to see what strategies we should, uh, you know, uh, execute today and tomorrow uh, to really uplift that uh, overall experience. So that, so again, that is that is really sort of backbone of uh, what I and a lot of leaders do at Christine Care. That data is really critical. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, good points. Good points. Yeah. Um, so, Madhulika, Rohit, you want to add anything? Yes. Uh, uh, with respect to data collection, uh, see, uh, the, what COVID has taught us is uh, we have to live uh, as if there is no tomorrow or something. So, we may not get that opportunity to visit the customer place in, uh, in the industry segment which I come from. Uh, we'll have to visit the uh, factories quite oftenly to collect the data and uh, curate them to the uh, needs of uh, our business, also to tune it to the needs of the customer. So the more we visit uh, and the more we collect the data, it has helped us to curate our product portfolio. And it also has uh, helped us to become a one-stop solution for our uh, customers. So because uh, quite oftenly we, uh, what we see is uh, today in this uh, digital transformation, the shopping has come to a mobile phone where you can uh, get almost everything if you open an e-commerce site and uh, consulting a doctor has come to a virtual thing now. So when these things have come to a single platform, uh, most of the customer or uh, when we humanize them, they are also human being. They also expect a one-stop solution uh, if they approach a vendor. So in our case, we are curating a product portfolio that if uh, a customer or if a prospect contacts us, so they at least end up with 90-95% uh, of their product requirement. So we designed a complete end-to-end uh, -end, uh, solution in the field which, were, uh, in which we are experts in. And we also walk an extra mile and we bring in some consultants uh, externally also to provide them the solution. So yeah. what we are, the data what we are collecting from the field, we are uh, we are curating ourselves to to the tune of customers' requirement, so that uh, customer need not contact multiple sources for uh, multiple solution. Let them contact us, and we will provide them uh, solution in multi dimensional. Okay. Yeah. That's a that's a good point. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, Madhulika, you have something to add here? Yeah, sure. So I, I think I already mentioned that asking the right questions, especially in my domain where I work with uh, more business to business uh, kind of uh, clients, right? Asking the right questions become very, very crucial. Technology, of course, is a phenomenal, uh, you know, enabler for collecting data, right? And I think uh, Mohit and Rohit have spoken a lot about that as well. Uh, in my line of business, it's very, very crucial, especially anybody in the audience who is dealing with a business who has an end customer, right? 
I think the FaceTime is very, very crucial. And Rohit, you had mentioned it, uh, you know, before we, uh, before the panel started as well, that having FaceTime with the client will get you the feedback, which I don't think, you know, many times you are able to collect virtually. Okay. Yes. So when you're having a candid conversation with your client uh, across the table over a coffee, and, uh, you know, you are having a lot of related uh, conversations. So it's not just about the product or the business or the service, right? It could be like, how's your family doing? Uh, you know, uh, which school is your child in? So when you kind of make these conversations face to face with the client and then you make them comfortable and then you move on to ask them something like, uh, so how do you think things are going? Is there anything more we can do? Is there anything that is not working? And during these conversations, you will see a lot of candid, uh, you know, feedback will come to you. Okay. And uh, instead of you getting defensive about that, you are also in, in a, you know, in a conversation where you're open to listening to the client as well. Right. And then you want to go back to the office. You want to bring your teams together and ensure that that is resolved for. So I feel data collection has to be hybrid. Uh, it, it can come through technology and various sources. Uh, and it should also come from your face-to-face uh, -face interactions uh, with your customer, which becomes very, very crucial. Yeah, yeah, very, very good point. Yeah, yeah, because um, in person and like you know, meeting them eye to eye is uh, is always always uh, better, right? There's there is there is no uh, replacement for that. Okay, so uh, with that, like you know, so we are uh, coming to uh, like you know, end of the discussion points. So. Uh, audience, like you know, if you have any questions, please, uh, like you know, you can ask them, or like, you, know, you can raise hands, and then we'll 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 get to you, and then like you know, we'll um like you know uh, get you the answers. So while you are thinking about the questions, like you know, I will go ahead and then like you know do uh, like you know give our thanks to the panelists and like you know uh, do that one while you are thinking about your questions. Okay, so. Um, so, like you know, um, Malika, Rohit, Mohit, like you know, so thanks so much for being here. Uh, like you know, taking time from your busy schedule and like you know, uh, sharing your experience and like you know, uh, walking us through uh, what you have done, like you know, what you learned and like you know, what could be the better way of doing it. Is this means a lot for for us and for the community. So, like you know, I'm sure like you know, the audience are going to find it uh, very useful. The discussion and like you know, and uh, they will uh, like you know take a good uh, few pointers from here. Like you know, wh when they are thinking about doing some of this customer experience uh, function. So, thanks so much uh, for your time. So, um, <clears throat> looking forward to like you know talking to you in some time future some other form or a similar form or like you know whatever it is as i said like you know please uh like you know um let us know whatever the way we can um like you know uh bring you in to one of the future sessions we are more than happy to do it thank you yeah, it was yeah. a great interaction session thank you thank you very much Absolutely. yeah yeah absolute so, pleasure uh, yeah uh, any questions i recommend uh, uh, i have a question to mohit Sure. Uh, hi, Mohit. Uh, thank you for uh, such a wonderful session. Uh, likewise, uh, I enjoyed three of your uh, views uh, in this specific topic. Uh, what uh, um, actually intrigued me is uh, the way you are providing information to your patients right from they get in to when they get out. Um, that's uh, something that really connected uh, to me. Uh, I'm just wondering, uh, how are you managing your, like, See, um, generally, the doctors are the most important uh, people in your hospital, and uh, they always come from a position of information, right? And uh, most times, uh, uh, they they would be giving this information to the patients, and uh, sometimes patients might not be um, understanding what uh, what they are saying because they are anxious, and sometimes the right uh, family person is not available, and that causes a discomfort when this information is shared. And most of uh, the misunderstandings happen in this particular point. Uh, so so how do you handle this specific uh, situation? Uh, uh, again, first, uh, thanks a lot, Divakar, for, for your call, for your appreciation. Um, I think, uh, how do we set a balance here? Uh, and because, again, this is healthcare, uh, we have to have a very right balance, wherein 
you know, I am not a doctor, right? So I can only provide information on the process side, on the, uh, you know, operation side of how their experience would be. Um, our surgeons provide all the medical consultations, right? So for example, a surgeon who's going to the hospital would meet with the patient and sort of provide uh, all their inputs that are required, right? Uh, they would sort of perform the surgery, they meet with the, with the dependent and the patient and sort of provide comments in the uh, OT notes and on the discharge summary where all the medicine, uh, what are precautions they need to take would be sort of written, right? Uh, my uh, sort of objective is to ensure that all the process around this is sort of well managed and well orchestrated so that any patient who's coming would not have to worry about anything else. So after discharge, you know, when a patient has any questions, so for example, uh, they want to meet with the doctor because something was not clear. Now that's where my team sort of would sort of patch them in uh, with the surgeon so that they can get the right information as well. Uh, we uh, so, so that's how we are trying to solve for. We ensure that the medical information is given by the surgeons or the doctors, while we sort of look at all the operations part, all the commitments that we have made, and ensure their journey is smooth, uh, you know, from admission to discharge and even post-discharge. So that's how we are uh, sort of have designed it and managed it. Okay, okay. Wonderful, wonderful. I, I, I got an understanding on this. No worries. Thank you. So um, thanks, Madhulika. Thanks, Mohit. Thanks, Rohit, for, for your time. And like, you know, uh, we appreciate your help. And uh, like, you know, so we look forward to like, you know, be meeting with you and discussing like you know, some other different topics in a different format or the same format in the future. Thanks so much. And uh, have a good evening. Thanks, Suduman. And thanks, everyone. Thanks, Rohit, Madhulika. Thank you so we much, continue. everyone. Yeah. Absolutely. It, it was you. really interesting. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.